So the news came out, and they said, we heard about that. We'd like to uh, interview you. I said, okay, if you want to, uh, you know, get my good side, which is neither. And uh, while we were in here shooting a video, the lady said, uh, what, are, what is the deal with all these smelly shoes all over your altars? And I said, well, I'm glad you asked. And uh, she, she said, well, I was telling her, hold on just a second. And she began to roll the film again, and they did a whole report on this too. Uh, she said, uh, we've been seeing this on Facebook, but we didn't know what it all meant. And you're the church that did it, which is really cool. So they did a whole story about it and let, uh, gave me a few minutes to, uh, to talk to them about the gospel. And I'm telling you, I just love to see God move. Come on, somebody. Amen. Your giving reports is what I was going to say earlier. Your giving reports for last year will be ready next Sunday. We will have them next Sunday. Let's go ahead with that first video. Hey, you don't like me today. Pastor Gardner, he always no. likes you. Pastor <laughs> Gardner here. We're starting our new series, Help Me, Holy Ghost. And I'm just curious, in 10 seconds, can you two tell me how important it is to be compatible? Extremely. 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 When we met each other, we did a online survey, and we were 97% compatible. Online survey. Online, online survey. 97%. 97%. That means she's only 3% wrong. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, hey, come here. Come here. Come, 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 come. How, uh, tell me what the, the biggest challenge is of being single. In, uh, in the world we live in today, what is the biggest challenge of being had single? Had to hit me with this. Um, I guess being lonely. Being lonely? Seeing my friends get married. Okay. Seeing your friends get married and feeling like you're, well, like a fifth wheel or something. And... Fifth wheel, inadequate. Eh, yeah. So you're just waiting for God. God's going to bring you the right person though, right? Yeah. You're going to wait for the right person. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you deserve that, right? Of course I do. Absolutely you do. All right. Afton, how happy are you being married to the drummer, Andrew? Happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And there you have it. Help me, Holy Ghost. We're going to have some fun today. Yeah. yeah. That was my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite one. I loved it. I loved it. So we're going to start a series today. And listen, if y'all want me to quit preaching by noon, you have to quit shouting until five minutes until noon, okay? Because I'm not going to quit at noon, okay? It's just not going to happen. Um, you have to go to the dead church up the road to do that. Um, so we're going to start a new series today called Help Me, Holy Ghost. Somebody say, Help Me, Holy Ghost. What are you talking about? I am married to a bonehead. Help Me, Holy Ghost. Yeah, or help me, Holy Ghost. What do you mean, help me, Holy Ghost? I'm dating, I'm single, and I'm lonely. Help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yeah, uh, this series is going to cover relationships on a whole lot of different levels. Um, uh, we're going to be doing some interviews like this throughout the uh, next few weeks. Uh, my wife and I are going to do a tag team message in a few weeks. Um, uh, to uh, talk about marriage, we're going to do that. I've also asked Bob, uh, Pastor Bob and Diane to do one together as well, and we're going to have some fun with this. We're going to do some different things. I do want to warn you, this series is going to be blunt, intense, and in your face. Somebody say, hoorah, hallelujah. Uh, at times, this is going to be kind of scary. You're going to go, oh, dear God, Pastor. Uh, just a quick quick warning you might want to take your kids to the children's church but we're going to say some stuff in here today and just get real and the reason i'm uh, giving altar calls during worship is because this series uh, is designed for learning we're going to do our shouting during worship and in our praying for people during worship but i really want us to learn something and at the end of this we're going to pray for relationships uh, specifically but some folks will say that this type of thing shouldn't be talked about in church well I have to tell you, I have a couple problems with not talking about relationships and the things that go along with relationships in church. I have two problems. Number one, if, if it was discussed when I was growing up, I mean, I could have probably saved a whole lot of headache and a whole lot of heartache. I probably wouldn't have made some dumb mistakes. Number two, if it's not supposed to be discussed in church, why is it in the Bible? Come on, I mean, really, if it's not supposed to be discussed in church, why is it in the Bible? So we're going to, we're going to talk about some things that are going to maybe be a little embarrassing, but uh, not so much today. I'm going to lay a lot of foundation. So no one in the typical uh, stereotyped Pentecostal church that I grew up in discussed relationships very much. If they discussed them at all, we felt the majority of the time it just wasn't proper. 
<laughs> wasn't proper. Amen. So I'm going to break some things down and I'm going to cover them by categories. Uh, there's a lot of things to say, but there's no way to say it all in one, two, or even three services. So I'm going to break them down in categories. And today I want to talk to you about what the, law, uh, the Bible says about the laws of compatibility. I want to talk to you about the laws of compatibility. Each week we're going to go deeper into relationships. I want to warn you, don't miss this series. This is going to be some good stuff. I just warn you up front, I'm going to get in your grill. Mm-hmm. Going to get in your grill. The next uh, several weeks, going to get in your grill. Look at the person next to you and tell them it's about to get real up in here. Go ahead and tell them it's about to get real up in here. It's about to get real up in this place. Huh? Come on, look at them, tell them, let's just get real. Come on, let's just be real today. It's, it's going to happen. Amen. Ask your neighbor. Go ahead, ask them. Be honest. Go ahead, so be honest. Say it. Go look at them, tell them, be honest. Be honest. What are they being honest about? Look at them again and tell them, you do have some junk in your trunk, don't you? Go ahead, tell them. You got some junk in your trunk. Amen. Come on, you know I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Now, if you're over 50 years old, junk in the trunk just simply means that <laughs> not everything is as it seems on the outside. Right? Not everything is as it seems on the outside. All right, so let's jump into this today. How many in here, let's just do a poll, how many believe in love at first sight? The kids. Okay, oh, there's a couple in the back. Okay, Bob, you believed in love. Lloyd, okay. Kayla Wood, she believes in... You don't believe when you saw your baby laid out in front of you, they laid your baby out, you didn't have love at first sight? Ooh, now how many believe in love at first sight? Yeah, amen. I believe in love at first sight. It happened to my wife. <laughs> oh, mercy. Amen. Uh, seriously, though, I believe you can fall in love at first sight with the way somebody looks. Mm -hmm, you can. Hey, let's just face it. There are some people that look hot. Amen. Uh, Lloyd, put your hand down, son. That's just terrible. Lying right here in church, and we just got out of the altar call. Um, there are some people that, let's just face it, they look good. Amen. They look good. Uh, yeah, I believe you can fall in love with the way somebody looks. I believe that you can fall in love with the way people handle themselves. Amen. I, I mean, I can, I can see things in the way people handle themselves and go, man, I absolutely love that about that person. They know how to handle themselves. You can fall in love with the way somebody talks. I was a Yankee when I met my Georgia Peach. Yes, I was. And she talked. She still got that little drawl every now and then. Of course, we all live here now, so I don't notice it near as much. And we've been married a long time, but she's from Georgia, and she had that little draw, and I kind of liked it. It was kind of cute, and I could tell you about the ball game where I told her I'd buy her a steak dinner if she hit the ball over my head, and she crushed it to the fence and went right over my head. But anyways, um, I do believe that you can fall in love at first sight. Amen? And in saying that, I also think it, falling in love with at first sight the way a lot of people are thinking is probably pretty superficial and really basic and generic from the aspect of, of love and attraction. I just fell in love with this person because they're so hot and we're going to get married. Can we play that other video real quick? I'm going to play you this one. Turn it up. What's up, cutie? Hey. What's going on? Hey, I was looking at you and I thought you were really pretty and I wanted to get your number. Is that too much to ask for or you know, let's go out to dinner? I usually go out to dinner with people. Oh yeah, who you go to dinner? By yourself? Sometimes. Oh wow. That's, um, I don't usually ask twice, but you sure you don't want to go out with me? Your car? Yeah, it's my car. Why? Well, I might be able to go out to dinner with you. You might? There's what? Oh, now you want to. Too bad. I don't like gold diggers. Peace! Yeah. You know, sometimes people fall in love for the wrong reason and they're a little superficial. Come on, somebody. Just because they smile pretty doesn't mean that they are pretty. Uh, pretty is is pretty does. Come on, somebody. The reason why the vows we say to each other recite things like, 
for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, is there for a purpose. Because when love goes beyond the basic elements of attraction, you begin, not to, uh, to, you begin to learn not to just live with somebody, you begin to live for somebody. Come on, are you here? My wife asked me this a few years back, and I will never forget it, and it really set me back and made me think about some things about marriage. She said this, out of the blue, she just brought this up. I don't, she'll remember this, I think. She said, would you still love me? If I developed cancer and I couldn't be your wife any longer, if I wasn't there to help with kids, the grandkids, I couldn't uh, contribute to the marriage by working and helping financially, and I couldn't be intimate with you because I had cancer, would you still be here and love me and take care of me? Yes. Yes. That's something to think about. Come on, I see a lot of people looking at each other right now. That's something to think about as you enter into relationships today. You see, I believe you can instantly fall in love with things about a person, but that, however, doesn't mean that you are compatible with a person. You cannot take the hard drive out of an HP, uh, an HP computer and put it in my Mac computer on my desk. The reason is they are not compatible. Ed Lane just bought a new Ford truck, and you can't take the starter out of Ed's Ford Lane truck if the starter on my Jeep goes out and put the starter of his truck on my Jeep because they are not compatible. Come on, somebody. Amen. They are not compatible. And I believe the main issue with young couples today that are married or dating is they are trying to fix an iPhone with the property or with the phone from the 1990s that has no internet on it, it just flips open and they're trying to fix an iPhone with a flip phone capability. Come on, are you in here today? You see, we live in a world that does its best to model relationships. Now, I told you I'm going to be blunt, okay? Now, what I'm fixing to say, I don't want you to uh, get offended. I'm not picking on anybody's... Uh, I'm not picking on anybody's... Um, television watching. Let me say it this way. I'm not picking on whatever you watch on TV. I'm just using this as a point. Could you put up that next slide? Because we live in a world today that does its best to model relationships. Come on, somebody. Now, I have kids who are absolutely addicted to this show. I absolutely find it insane, and it drives me crazy. I just can't watch it. Uh, uh, I'm not trying to pick on anybody's TV watching here, but listen to me for just a minute, okay? trying to model uh, uh, relationships. Some of y'all need to turn off General Hospital because that is not real life. This is not real life, no matter how they say it's reality. There is no real in this reality television, okay? There is no good woman going to let a man mess around with 35 other different women and then go swap spit and play tonsil hockey. Amen. They'll look at you and say, you gross, filthy, nasty pig. Take your, mm, yeah, and get out. Okay, so here's one. Okay, 30-day fiancé. Anybody seen that? That's the most, re anyway, that is crazy, okay? The bachelor and bachelorette. Here's, here's my favorite one. Married at first sight. Mm -hmm. Shows that are trying to show the realities of finding true love, love that last. Love that last. I was in a motel room trying to fall asleep one night. I was preaching somewhere, and uh, my wife was not with me. And uh, I turned on television. And listen, entertainment for us is a big deal. We could go down to the, uh, to the Motel 6 or wherever and turn on TV. My wife goes, I would never sleep at the motel. Say, she won't either. It's got to be $150, $200 a night. But anyway, we, we were laying in, I was laying in this motel, and I turned on a TV because I couldn't sleep. And this show came on, and we don't have cable. We don't have a satellite or any of that stuff so anytime you see a new show you guys may have been watching it forever and I'm going wow cool and I was half asleep and I was listening to this married at first sight and uh, it was very very interesting mainly reason I don't have that stuff is because I'm cheap okay but these two people that had never met they went to the altar they never seen each other until they were at the altar saying their I do's now listen there was no talk of the future what one wanted what the other didn't want there were no talk about what do you do for a living what do I how much do you make where are we going to live? There was no talk about where the residence would take place. There was no talk about finance. Nobody pulled credit reports. Nobody talked about religion. Nobody talked about families. They were just at the 
altar, they got married, and then they had 30 days to try to fix it and make it work. Nothing, just married at first sight. What if they have boogers hanging out of their nose and you're walking to the altar and you signed a contract to marry that ugly dog? Come on, somebody. Amen. The experiment... Okay, The experiment or the reason for the show was to see if they could work through their obvious, dis, uh, their obvious uh, differences and become one flesh, if they could become a marriage unit. Well, many of them and most of them did not have any trouble becoming one flesh. You know what I'm talking about, right? I don't need to draw pictures, right? You know what I'm talking about. They didn't have any trouble becoming one flesh, but the problem was instantly, uh, uh, instantly uh, they, after they wake up from their physical expressions to each other, uh, now the reality sets in, I wonder if he's a jerk. I wonder if she's a jerk. I mean, come on, come on. They have a pastor on the show, uh, at least they said he was, and a marriage counselor trying to help them navigate the relationship. And i got to tell you, it didn't help me fall asleep. It completely captivated me that this was on television. I was completely blown away. So I sat up in bed, and I began to watch the stupidity and gullibility of this show and thought, I wonder how many dumb people actually believe that this is real. I mean, I'm serious. I'm sorry if you watch it. I, I'm not picking. I'm trying not to pick. Rather than marry and figure it out, we're going to get married and figure it out. Uh, there should always be a time of dating. We used to call it courting. There should always be a time of, of dating and learning each other. Listen to this preacher. Why would you ever commit to a marriage for richer or for poor in sickness and in health why would you commit to a marriage if you're already getting the benefits of the honeymoon and you're not having to commit to nothing? It's quiet in this Presbyterian church today. Yeah, it's the, listen, I'm still in the introduction. It's going to get worse. Hold on, okay? Amen. Every movie, just about anymore, every sitcom, every soap opera, they are all trying to model relationships. Some of the women on daytime TV have had a child with 13 people on that show. Some of the women on that thing, some of the men have been married to every woman, including their mother-in-law, on that show. I can't even hardly believe when I, was, when I saw somebody watching it the other day, I, did, I forgot those things were on television. I just blew my mind they were still on. And I went, dude, I watched him when I was a teenager, and he had, he had black hair then, and that was 30 years ago, and he's still got black hair, and he's married to his daughter-in-law. It's crazy. It's crazy stuff. Amen. Uh, uh, so again, I'm not trying to pick on your choice of TV. What I'm saying today is for a society that is so consumed with relationships, you would think the divorce rates in America would be getting better and not worse. What happened? I just lost all my amens in this place. There is nobody saying anything. Um, you would think for a, a, a society that is doing their best to model relationships that the divorce rates today would be getting better and not worse. Are you in here today? Yeah, amen. You would think people would be happier and not tripling our consumption of depression meds just to live a life that you hate. Mm -hmm. How is it that in today's world there can be so much emphasis put on right relationships, yet there's so much failure? How does that happen? What's wrong? Why does it seem people are having so much trouble finding love and holding on to it? Dum, da, dum, dum, dum. All right, let's talk about that. Somebody say compatibility. Let's talk about compatibility. During creation, after each day that God created, he looked at what he had created for the day and he said, it is good. But when he came to the place where he created man and he saw that man was alone, the Bible records this in Genesis 2.18. The Bible said, the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I'm going to make a helper comparable to him. The word comparable is the word compatible. Now let me just throw a little side note in here and, and show you something I'm going to preach on in a couple weeks. I think I'll get to it in a couple weeks, okay? I'll show you something right here. Uh, we're going to dig a little deeper in. God said it's not good for man to be alone. Somebody say alone. The word alone is actually two words. It's all one. Come on. 
The words alone, the word alone is actually two words that was joined together. It's actually the word, the two words, all one. It's not good for man to be alone. It's not good for Adam to be alone. Adam being alone isn't good. The word is actually two words and it's all one. You can feel free to dig into that before I ever get there. That is some good study and let your mind run wild through the possibilities to what that brings to your mind. It's not good for man to be all one. Mm, that is some good preaching. I'll get to that later. Aloneness. Let's talk about this for just a second. Aloneness is not the absence of being married. Somebody said, I don't like being single because I'm just so lonely. Aloneness is not the absence of being married because I want to tell you that I have counseled with many married folks over the years who are married and are still alone. Well, boy, it is quiet in here. Amen. Uh, some folks are married to their mamas. Mm-hmm. Amen. Listen, if you, uh, young lady, are married to Isaac, you know, he was 75 years old before he had his first date. Uh, you, you need to be careful, okay? Some folks are married to their mama. Some folks are married to their work. Some folks are married to their ministry. Some folks are married to social media. Some folks are more committed to their friends than they are their own, their own husband or wife. Come on. The fact is that we were created for, create, uh, for creativity. We were created for connectivity. So understanding that we were created to connect, we must also understand that being single takes work, and we must have a high priority to learn in our lives, if we are single, how to manage singleness. Talking about compatibility, but we're going to work some things in here. You must learn how to manage singleness. Somebody say singleness. I know that sounds weird, and I know it may sound silly uh, that singleness needs to be managed, but listen, you weren't born married. Come on, somebody. Amen. You weren't born married. Amen. You were born single. No, uh, not only were you born single, but you're going to die single one day too. That's right. That's right. Because the Bible says in the afterlife, heaven or hell, you won't be married. Come on, the Bible says that in heaven there will be none married or given in marriage. That means that marriage is an earthly institution. Come on, and let me say this before I move on in my next point. Singleness may be a natural thing, but it does need to be managed. But it can be a very difficult thing even though it's supposed to be natural. Singleness can be a difficult thing, even if it's supposed to be natural. There are a lot of natural things that are difficult, like natural childbirth. If it were up to a man to populate the earth, there would be no more babies. Mm -hmm. None. None at all. All right, let me move on real quick here because i got somewhere I'm going. Camouflage. Let's talk about camouflage. Whether you know it or not, when you're dating, that's your life. For the first few dates, that's your life right there. You don't want him or her to know specific things about you. But the longer you date, the more those things come out. And that's why I encourage people to take your time. Yes, I do. Amen. People who know me know that I love hunting and fishing. I absolutely love it. So since hunting season is finishing up, I'll use a hunting analogy right here. Could you throw my next picture up there, please? This is really cute. I like this one. Uh, that's, yeah. You can see what she does in the deer stand. That's my hunting buddy, Ari. Just leave that one up there. Do you see Woody on the shelf there and the coloring book and crayons? Yeah, uh, she can't play video games out there because she'll scare the deer. But uh, uh, that's my hunting buddy right there. Uh, she goes with me all the time now. And when we are not blind, I bought a hunting net or a camel net to throw over her. And she sits in a lawn chair if we're not in a blind and I throw that over her. And she thinks she is the coolest thing in the world. She says, Daddy, the reindeer can't see me. I said, no, nope, they can't see you. She said, Daddy, shoot the reindeer in the eye so we can eat them. Funny. It's the funniest thing you've ever seen. So the other day, right before Christmas, uh, we were walking through Burlington, and they had the reindeer and everything, you know, all the different uh, things they have where they have little fuzz on it, and they look real, and then they have the crystal ones, and they have the little pretty decorated ones, and Santa is standing off to the side on this little thing. And these women were over there looking at, at Burlington. They were looking at it, and it was just me and Ari, and they were, oh, this is so beautiful. I think I'll buy this for the home. And I was pushing Ari down the aisle, and we went by there, and I looked at it, and Ari said, Ooh, Papa, look at the reindeer. And I said, okay, well, we'll stop and look. And the ladies went, oh, aren't they beautiful? And she goes, yeah, we shoot them and eat them. <laughs> My 
girl, yeah. Yeah, it's my girl. It was the funniest thing in the world. Them ladies were going, you're raising a homicidal deer killer. I said, that's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, she sits in a lawn chair, and she thinks it's the coolest thing when I put a camo cover over her, and you can see through it and everything, but you know, she just thinks that's the coolest thing in the world with her binoculars. And I'm amazed uh, with hunting. I, I'm amazed at the nocturnal animal that can go, uh, that can see perfect in the dark, but in the daytime can be 50 yards away from me, look right at me, and not see me. They can't see in the daylight very well. I'm amazed at how they can see everything and hear everything, but in the daytime they can't see anything. Uh, because I'm hidden so well, we have a scent killer we spray all over ourselves so they don't smell the, uh, the downy you know, laundry detergent when you go out there. Um, sometimes we even take deer pee and we sprinkle that around. I know it gets a little weird, but you know what? You do what you got to do to see that, hand, that thing on the wall. Amen. Uh, because I'm, hit, I'm hidden so well, I'm amazed at how they can't see and they will come right to a feeder 20 30 40 50 yards right in front of you and if they are legal they go from eating my feed to being eight on my plate hallelujah amen so uh, I got thinking about that and I'm thinking you know what Tracy dating is a lot like deer hunting dating is a lot like deer hunting now you know I had to make this stuff up as I went because there's nobody dumb enough to preach on this amen dating is a lot like deer hunting you never know what's in the blind or what's under the camo netting come on somebody amen let me explain to you how silly some folks are about their life are y'all ready for this are y'all okay is it all right to some of y'all are going oh my god I can't believe he's talking about this oh dear Jesus yes well Anyways, I won't get into the flesh here. I'll just keep that to myself. But let me tell you how silly some people are about relationships, okay? You go buy a car. It looks great from a distance. It's got great paint. You get up close, the paint is beautiful. You get in, the interior doesn't have a rip on it. It is in perfect shape. The Texas crack dash uh, thing y'all have, there are no cracks. It's perfect. It's beautiful. Everything is great. It's got the most expensive aftermarket stereo system. It's got brand new tires, and I mean, it looks great. You're sitting in there, and you're going, wow. The salesman comes out, and I'm not nothing against car salesmen. This is part of my story, okay? The salesman comes comes out and says you want to take this car for a test drive and you say no thank you that car looks great to me I don't even want to hear it run so you go inside you sign the papers you give them your money and one of the papers you sign says as is no warranty mm -hmm. you go you leave the office they give you a set of keys you go get in the car that looks so good and you stick the key in there and the lights don't turn on there's nothing there I mean it won't roll over it won't do nothing and you get out and pop the hood come on somebody but it looked great the paint's good got new tires you pop the hood and there's no engine come on Come on, amen. You pop the hood and there's no engine. And you go back in and say, dude, there's no engine. Yeah, I know, but it's got new tires, great paint, and a good stereo. Uh-huh. Camo. Somebody say camo. Yeah, camo. Amen. You're, uh, you're dating, and he takes you to a fancy restaurant, and you're going, wow. Man, he took me to the Olive Garden. He took me to... Hey, man, listen, just start it out right. Don't open the door if you're not going to do it later, and take her to McDonald's if that's where you're going to take her after you're married, okay? Don't do that all. I mean, you, so you get me, you're dating, and he takes you to the fancy restaurant. He's taking you to whatever you would consider to be a fancy restaurant, okay? You're going there, you sit down, and you're going, wow, he is amazing, and this is awesome. I can see my future with this great guy. What you don't know is he spent his tithe money to take you there. What you don't know is that he took his rent money to drive you there, to buy you a flower, and to do that, and tomorrow he's homeless. Or mama's going to pay for it. Come on, somebody. Amen. So he really didn't take you anywhere. His mom and daddy did. Yeah, but, but it's got new tires. He's got great tires, don't he? And he, he looks good with all that paint. Come on, somebody. Amen. What you don't know is he spent his rent to take you there. Somebody say camo camo amen fancy restaurant amen now you're married for five years you got two kids one hanging on your ribcage a third one on the way and and here's what you get now you get wendy's and mcdonald's or even worse sonic <laughs> that just made me throw up in my mouth just saying that that's they're so gross man you don't understand pastor he is hot she is hot my wife used to tell our kids are they a stove 
That is so disrespectful. You don't say that. My wife would tell our boys that all the time. They'd come in and say, oh my gosh, mom, she is so hot. And my wife would say, uh, stoves are hot, microwaves are hot, things like that. But a girl is either pretty or not. And they're going, oh my God. You know, they're, they're doing all that kind of stuff. You know, oh my gosh, pastor, he is so hot. She is so hot. Yeah, but have you seen their credit report yet? Because you, yeah, because you may have an 820, but when you marry their 580, yeah, come on somebody, come on somebody, amen. Uh, listen, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to say some blunt things. Are you all okay? Are you ready? If, if they don't pay their bills on time while you're dating and they don't work a job consistently, come on, they are not and shouldn't even be considered marriage material for you. Why would you do that to yourself? Come on, I want to help them. I want to change. I will change them. Those are the famous last words of many young men and women that I have met over the years. I've done a lot of weddings over the years, tons of weddings, and, and I have a few scheduled over the next few months, and I mean absolutely no re disrespect to anybody, but where's Jeremy at? Is Jeremy in here? Jeremy! Talking about weddings. Jeremy, come here. Bring your band with you. Uh, I, I've done a lot of weddings over the years. And, and uh, there are some crazy things. I said weddings and Jeremy comes out. I'm not taking him, trust me. He's yours. <laughs> uh, I don't swing that way. Anyways, uh, uh, I have a few scheduled over this. You know, I'm, I mean, I don't mean any disrespect. But we do this. I, John, take you, Sherry, to be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, and sickness and for we say all that stuff, and then we sing a song, and everybody's giddy and happy. Right? And then what we do? We say, I love you, I love you, I love you, and I pledge to do and and, and I, I we're gonna sing this song, and everybody's gonna be happy that we're singing this wonderful, wonderful song. <laughs> I sang that to her at our wedding. Gosh, I was young. Jeez. I actually had all my hair. I didn't have to comb it off to the sides. And, and see, we say these things. I, I take you to be my wife, to be my husband, to have and to hold from to stay forward, for better for words, sickness and... Uh, we, we do the whole thing. We do the whole thing. And then we sing pretty songs. And I've got nothing against any of that, okay? Are y'all okay? Are y'all okay if I go on with this? Uh, I, I, I got nothing against any of that, but I think they end the vows a little prema prematurely, and I think they sing the song a little too quick because I think there's more to the vows that actually need to be said to bring things into reality. Like in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to honor and obey. And all. Uh, how about this? And I take your mama. Because she comes with the package. Yes, she does. And I take your daddy. Lloyd is going, his mother-in-law sitting in back of him right now. He's going, Jesus, help us, God. And I take your daddy. Yeah, I take your daddy. And I take your crazy brother and your aunts and your crazy sister. I take all them. Yes, hallelujah. Okay, now let's just go a little bit further. And let's just go a little bit further here, okay? And I take every emotion that you've ever had that you don't tell everybody that we're eventually going to deal with. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I take every nasty negative thing that's ever been spoken into your life that one day we will deal with. You may smile now, but one day we have to deal with that stuff. I take the neglect that you have ever lived through. I take every generational curse that has been placed on your life. I take how you were raised with the abuse and the molestation that maybe have happened. I take all that stuff that you've ever lived through before we ever met. You see, that is where the rubber meets the road, and that's real life. I think we just stop those wedding vows way too soon and we sing our pretty songs and we really don't sit and talk to people. You see, this is one of the things that I, I, in training young ministers, that I tell them all the time. Don't ever do a shotgun wedding. Never. Don't ever do so. You take time and dig. Make sure they understand what they're getting into. Make sure he understands how she was... If they can't talk to their mom now... There's a reason for it. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 27. Paul said this. He said, are you bound to a wife? Don't seek to be loosed. Are you loose from a wife? Don't seek a wife. In chapter 7 of 1 Corinthians, Paul addresses everything from the... He talks about marriage, singleness, virginity. He even talks about spouses that die and what you have to do in those circumstances. He covers everything from top to bottom. Here's what Paul said in the verse that I just read to you. Let me read it again. Are you bound to a wife? Don't seek to be loosed. Are you, are you uh, loosed from a wife? Don't seek a wife. You can turn that around and say husband as well. Here's what he is saying in the verse that we just read. Where are you at in this life right now? Are you married or are you single? That's what he's saying. Are you bound to a wife? Are you married? Or are you loose from one? You're single. Where are you at in this life right now? Here's what Paul's saying. Be okay with where you are at right now. Be okay with where you are at right now. He was saying, stop spending your days dreaming you were somebody else. If you're married, enjoy being married. Come on, somebody. Are you in here? If you're married, you shouldn't have to uh, try to endure the day. Come on, you should be enjoying married life. If you're single, enjoy being single. Don't spend your time thinking how lucky brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so is that they have what you want. The truth is they may be thinking that about you. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Amen. How many in here know that nobody is perfect? I mean, I'm close, but nobody is perfect. Um, I've told this story before, but this lady at our church in Michigan, she was a single girl, had a lot of problems, and, and relationships was one of them. She was, I mean, she was in more relationships than any. And she looked at my wife one day. This is funny. as me. She said, I wouldn't have all these problems and be gallivanting around and doing all this stuff if I was married to a man like Pastor. My wife went, <laughs> I didn't see a thing funny about it. But my wife laughed her full head off at her. And she thought that was the funniest thing in the world. Um, listen, uh, uh, how many of you, again, know nobody is perfect? Hey, Ben? They may smile here, and you think, wow, wow, look at that smile. They're so happy. But when they go home, mm -hmm. come on, somebody. Hey, ben, they may look good here. Uh, I mean, they may look great here at church. Uh, look how nice they're dressed. And look at, but when they go home, they don't brush their teeth. How would you like to kiss? How would you like to kiss a can of tuna fish? Ugh. Amen. Belching and burping and then come and lay a kiss on you. Isn't that gross? I wouldn't. No. Mm -mm. Uh, you, they may look good here, but at home they don't brush their teeth. They won't comb their hair. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Brother Mike said, I'm offended by that. <laughs> you can comb your eyebrows. Amen. Um, they, <laughs> they won't take a shower. Come on, somebody. I mean, they have B.O. so bad on Monday that they could stop traffic in front of the house and draw flies. Yeah, amen. Seriously, you don't know what somebody else is living through just because they look good to you every now and then. Come on. Let me move on. Is it all right for me to move on? How many of y'all have ever heard this stuff preached before? Okay, we're going to keep going because um, hopefully you'll come back next week. Um, next point is this. Being single isn't a disease. Mm -hmm. Being single isn't a disease. I'm just waiting for God to send me somebody. <gasps> oh, I want God to send me somebody. Well, are you ready for God to send you somebody, or are we just going to mark them down as number three and you get rid of them and start praying again for number four? Come on, are you ready for them? You see, singleness defined means being a complete person. 
It means being a complete person. The root meaning for singleness is a number sequence called being a whole number. Being a whole number. Singleness, a whole number. Here's where marriages, uh, marriage issues begin. They begin when somebody who is not complete hooks up with somebody else who's not complete and they try to complete each other together. Does that make sense? Okay, so a three-quarter can't link up with a quarter and make a whole number. Well, he's almost cool. He's almost got all his teeth. He's almost worked two weeks. She almost... Come on, somebody. Come on. Are you here? Listen carefully. Until you are complete and whole all by yourself, you are not quality marriage material. Now let me dig into that just a little bit. Look at the person sitting next to you and say to them, baby, I'm not looking for a fraction. Mm-mm. Look at it. Tell them I'm not. Come on, some of y'all won't even. You want to stug at your husband right now and your wife. Come on, tell them I ain't looking for a fraction. Come on, somebody. Here's what I'm talking about. We need to learn who we are, what we need, and what we want. We need to understand where we are strong and we need to understand where we are not strong. We need to understand who we are before we enter into a relationship with somebody else. Tell your neighbor, baby, come on, tell them, baby, there are way too many fractions. Say it, there are way too many fractions getting hot and bothered. Come on, you can say hot. You can say it. There are way too many fractions running around getting hot and bothered trying to find happiness. Come on, you better get a clue. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. There, there is way more to a relationship than physical or sexual things. Do you know who you are all by yourself without anybody else in your life? Let me move on real quick here. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 32. But I want you to be without care. Listen to what Paul is saying. I want you to be without care. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord and how he may please the Lord, but he who is married cares about the things of the world and how he may please his wife. People don't understand how much is in the Bible about relationships and marriage. Here's what Paul is saying. When you are married, your attention must go towards your spouse. He is not saying, everybody go get divorced so you can be sold out to ministry. That's not what he's saying. He's not saying that at all. He is saying there's a lot of advantages to being single if you can control your flesh. Listen, I want to say this real quick. I think a lot of times what we do in church, uh, a, lot, a lot of what happens, I think it's the church's fault. Because we quote scripture, better to marry than burn, better to marry than burn. Let's just go ahead and get married so you don't burn, amen. Well, how about we just stop telling people better to marry than burn and tell them, how about uh, uh, control your flesh? Right? Come on, amen. Uh, listen, what Paul is saying is there's a lot of advantages to being single if you can control yourself. Most people can't, but there is. And we, we will get to the advantages and, uh, and, and disadvantages of being single in just a second, but I want to go through one more scripture, and then this is going to get fun, okay? Now watch this. Verse 34, he says this. There's a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord that she may be uh, holy both in body and in spirit. But she who is married cares for the things of the world and how she may please her husband. And this I say for your own profit, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is proper, that you may serve the Lord without distraction. Okay? Here's what he's saying. When you are single, there are less distractions in your life. Again, he's not saying go get divorced. How many in here have a fish? Anybody have a fish at your house? Okay, hands down. How many in here have a dog? Anybody have a dog? Oh, look at all you dog lovers. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, how many of y'all here have a cat? I went to China Star with Bob the other day and had cat. It was good. We pulled the hair off it and ate it anyways. It was good. Just kidding, leave me alone, okay? Um, so we have people with fish, we have people with... How many have no fish, no dog, no cat? None, nothing. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with you people? How many of you have grandkids or kids? Close enough, you have a pet. There you go, amen. All right, let me ask you this, with, with pets, okay? When do you feed yours? I feed, See, I have this dog, um, she's a golden doodle, and she's my favorite person in the world. She knows what I think. 
I can be sitting and watching TV. I can be sitting in my chair, and she walks up with that goofy look, and she puts her paw on my arm, and she says, I'm hungry. I'm serious. I look at her, and I'll go, do you got to go outside? And she doesn't move. I said, are you hungry? And she goes, she knows what I want. I mean, I, I, so I love this dog. So let me ask you this. When do you feed yours? I feed them before, uh, or when I get up in the morning, I go and I water and feed both our dogs. My wife has a dog, but hers is stupid. Um, mine is brilliant. It is. It's dumb. It's, it's, well, it's actually getting smarter. It's starting to grow on me. Uh, but anyways, when do you feed your dog? Four o'clock. All day. You just dump the food in there and say, have at it, boys. Buffet, right? Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you feed them every day or every other day or every week? or what, how, how often do you feed them? Twice a day? How, how many feed them once a day? How many feed them twice a day? Look at you, man. How many of you don't care? They just eat when they eat. <laughs> how many of y'all say, come here, lick the plate clean? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Remind me not to go to your house. <laughs> Amen. Uh, listen to this. Uh, Okay, so you, you have a pet and you feed them and almost everybody in here says you feed them every day, right? Right? Why? What? You what? You love them? That's why you feed them? And they're hungry? Yeah. <laughs> My wife says, you feed them. I'm not... <laughs> right. So how many on this side? You feed your pet every day? How many? Why? I'm asking this side. What? They deserve it? It's our responsibility? Somebody else? <laughs> um, can I just say this to you about relationships? I want to say this to you about relationships, okay? Uh, listen, you have to feed a marriage. This is going to be kind of blunt, but you have to invest in a marriage. You don't get a good marriage just to have a good marriage. There was a post on Facebook about you two the other day, and they didn't call your name. But I knew exactly who they were talking about, and I private messaged them and said, I saw that too. Because at the end of service, when we were having altar call, and almost everybody was fixing to leave, you turned to Diana, and you laid your hands on the side of her head, and you began to pray for her. And there was a post on Facebook that said, I saw Pastor Bob praying for his wife, and I want a relationship like that so bad. It they said, it touched my heart to see two people so in love to pray like that. Now, she's got you trained good. She's got you trained good. It was on Facebook. I saw it, and I responded privately and said, I saw the same thing. And I, I said the same. I was standing right up here, and I went, wow. It is beautiful to see you do that. It is absolutely beautiful to see you do that. I want to say this to you, okay? This is going to get blunt right through here. But you have to feed your marriage and invest in it if you want it to be successful. Come on, somebody. You have to, you have to, you have to invest. You can't get married and run around and hang out with the guys all hours of the night and act like your marriage is going to grow. You can't go hang out at Zumba all day long, girls. Come on, somebody. You can't go hang out with the girls and hit the clubs all night and act like a marriage is going to grow. I want to tell you something. You must invest in a relationship. Man, it got quiet in here when I said that. You have to invest in a relationship if you're going to have a successful relationship. Come on, somebody. Are you in here? Are you in here tonight? Listen, I want to say something to you, and this may sound silly, but my wife and I this year for Christmas, we gave each other the gift of time. That may seem silly to some people, but when you're as busy as we are, we have no time. And we've had two of our 52 dates for this year already. Two of 52. Every week, one day a week, we are going out and we are spending it alone with the baby sitter for Aerie and we are just going to go do something just us whether it's sitting at a picnic table or if it's at a movie or if it's at roadhouse or what, whatever we just want to go do something just us to spend some quality time together now this may seem absolutely silly to some people but I want to say this you must invest in the relationship you must invest you will never have a good, strong marriage if you do not invest in that marriage. Are you in here today? Come on. Amen. You, 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 when you get married, you cannot go and do all the things you used to do before you were married. Now, listen to this, okay? Thursday night, there was a full moon. There was a full moon. I have an app on my phone that said the deer are running on Thursday night. Kevin looked at me Thursday afternoon and he said, full moon. 
I said, yeah, I know. He goes, we're going hunting. And I said, dude, it's Thursday night. He said, oh, that's right. You can't go anywhere on Thursday. I said, well, you know, um, and then I thought, you know what? If I even went home and suggested that we moved it to Friday so I could go deer hunting on Thursday because it's a full moon and everybody knows hunting those deer run on the full moon. And when it's cold, <laughs> and I was thinking, I just want to kill one or two more. And I just want to play in the body cavity a little bit. I just want to kill. And, and, and then I thought, you know, I better not do that because I enjoy both my eyes being the color they are right now. Amen. And if I would have put her off to go deer hunting because Kevin was trying to tempt thee, I looked at him and got real spiritual and said, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. <laughs> you got to feed a marriage. Come on, somebody. In the society we live in today, we have a lot of single folks trying to act like married folks, and a lot of married folks trying to act like single folks. Come on. Amen. You can't when you're married just go spend money the way you want to when you get married because now it is not your money, it is our money and we have bills together. Come on. So Paul is saying there are distractions when you're married. There's things you must do if you're married. Paul is saying that there are advantages to being single if you look at things the right way. For instance... Here's some advantages. If you like Chinese food, cat on a stick. And the woman you've been married to for 21 years and nine months as of right now hates Chinese food. I'm not picking on anybody or calling any names. Hates Chinese food. If you're single, you can eat Chinese food whenever you want to. And, and listen, if you like Tex-Mex, here's... And your spouse hates it. If you're single, here's an advantage. You can eat Tex-Mex anytime you want to. Right? Amen. You can, you can only... Listen, here's some more advantages of being single. You only have to do half the laundry. Here's another, here's another one. If you're, if you're uh, single you, uh, and you're a man, you don't have to put the, put the seat down and lift it up. You have to do none of that. You don't have to do it. Here's another advantage of being single. You, don't, you only have to do half the dishes. Amen. It's a great, I mean, if you look at it right, there's some good, here's another thing, an advantage of being single, okay? You can, you can burp and snore and make other noises in bed and never have to say excuse me to anybody. There's advantages to being single. Come on, somebody, you know it's true. You know it's true. Amen. You know it's true. Paul is saying to us, don't sit and die waiting for somebody to come and make you complete. Learn who you are right now. And when you figure it out, come on, somebody, when you figure it out, you will then have something to add or bring to a marriage covenant. Listen, when you bring something to a marriage covenant, you're looking for somebody to compliment you, not complicate things. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Come on, somebody. Comparable, suitable, compatible. I'm going to stop right here. Let's talk about being on the same page together. God said it's not good for man to be alone. All one. It's not good for man to be all one. Alone. All right. A hardened criminal, when he is thrown into solitary confinement for any length of time, will curl up in a ball after many days because we were created for connectivity. You get them, and they've been in there for a while, and they are shaking. They're talking to themselves. They're going batty. They, they, you watch those shows on TV where they put them on islands by themselves for 40 days, and they're sitting there with a the camera, bawling and crying, grown men. <laughs> and they're crying and not going crazy because there's nobody to talk to. How many remember the movie Castaway? He painted a face on a volleyball and was talking to Wilson. And then he was telling Wilson jokes. And then he was answering Wilson when Wilson talked back. I should have put a clip of that up. Yeah, I mean, all this crazy, and that's real life stuff. Because when you're alone for too long, it does something to somebody. Come on, somebody. That's why the Bible said it's not good for man to be alone. Genesis 2.18, it's not good that man should be alone. I'm going to make a helper comparable to him. Somebody's on the same page. Compatible, suitable, comparable. Have you spent enough time by yourself to know who you are? I got a lot of stuff to cover, and we're going to jump into this next week. And next week's going to—this is just kind of a tip of the iceberg thing. But have you been alone with yourself long enough to know who you are yet? 
if you don't know who you are, come on, how are you ever going to be suitable for somebody else? If you don't know what you want, if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to bring something to a relationship that you're totally lost in before you get there? I wish I would have heard this stuff when I was a young man because it would have saved me lots of trouble. I got a lot of on-the-job training and just being honest, my wife and I may talk about this one uh, when we come up here. We almost divorced because I had no idea what I wanted. I had no idea where I was going. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I mean, I was, I, I was lost. I was lost. I was fixing to go into the ministry and all I know is I wanted to preach, but when I met her, the only ministry I had was the laying on of hands ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you will get that when you go home. Uh, I mean, it was, it was a mess. I had a lot of trouble. I'm going, God, what a... And I had a lot of on-the-job training. I want to tell you something. We almost divorced a couple times because I had no idea who I was and what I wanted, and neither did she. And together, we had to grow up. It's quiet in here. Come on, it's quiet in here. Jeremy, make, make me sound real pretty, okay? Just for a few minutes, just make me sound pretty. Um, okay, listen, if you're dating somebody and they can't lift their hands and praise God, you need to get away from them. Mm-hmm. You need to get away from them. Pastor, why are you saying that? Listen, if there isn't any praise in them, they have no idea who they are yet. That is blunt. You really believe that? Yes, I do. Absolutely, I do. Do you know enough about your life to bring in uh, someone else who can compliment you? Do you know enough about you that you can bring somebody else into your life? You see, that's the key to a relationship. I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know what I want. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for somebody else who's on the same page I'm on, at the same place I'm on, or at and is going to the same destination I'm going to and because I know that about myself I can say no I'm sorry you're really nice but we're, we're on different pages it's not that you're a bad person uh, and, and I may find you attractive over here but we're not going to the same place and, and I, I don't you know there's just something different you know and, and uh, I I felt like I was going into the ministry and everybody I met would never compliment ministry when I was a young man. And then I met Sherry and, and, and I got to tell you, the first time I met her, I kid you not, the first time I met Sherry, she was running and speaking in tongues around the church. And I looked at her and went, what a stinking lunatic. Honest to God, that's what I said. And then she got up off the floor after being slain in the spirit, and they were having testimony service. How many know what testimony service is? She got up off the floor, and she said, the Holy Ghost just spoke to me and said, I'm going to be married to a preacher. Now, I was new to that church, and there was a lot of preachers, young and single. I had to beat one up. I did. I did, didn't I? He was actually pastoring, where's, where's Paul? He was pastoring your son-in-law's church where Ernest and Stephanie are before they got there. They called him uh, Brother, uh, what was his name? Bill Estep. They called him They called him Brother Estep. But when I would talk to one of his members, I would say, ask Spike how he's doing. And they said, where'd you run into John Gardner at? That's what they said. He was a little Navy boy. And I was a redneck. And he kept bumping me. Because I took her out on a date and he wanted to date her. He bumped me. And I told him, I said, if you bump me again, I'm going to turn your world upside down and embarrass you in front of every person in here, including God. He said, yeah, right. And he bumped me again. And I picked him up over my head. I am not kidding you in his little, anyway, I almost said a bad word there, his little sweet Navy boy stuff. And I stuck him head first into the ground and he stuck like a javelin right there. And then his body went limp and knocked him out cold. And everybody from there on out called him Pastor Spike. I made sure they did. She said she's marrying a preacher. I'm getting that. Hallelujah. Yeah. You may be pretty. You may be pretty, but 
I've got to know we're going in the same direction. And see, this is the problem we have. We have people that don't know who they are. They have no goal in life. They've got no goal. They have no idea. Let's just get married and we'll just figure it out. That's why you're having issues. Oh my gosh, you're so hot. He is, I mean, just fine. She is so fine. I think we just need to go get married. They're so fine. And then that fineness wears off. Yeah, it does. It does. Because his chest is way up here. And then after five years, his chest is down here. Uh huh. He's walking like this when you're dating. And then after 10 years, he's got his britches pulled up to here. My britches are still down where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Woo, she's hot. Yeah. She, she put on all that makeup while you're dating. And then eight years later, she got crow's feet in the corner of her eyes. Uh-huh. She's had three babies. And now she look like her mama. Yeah. You know what the crow's feet on a woman's face are for? From looking at a man too much and going, what? That's how they get them. True. So if you know where you're going, you bring people into your life. Come on, this will work for any relationship. You bring people into your life that complement where you're going and not complicate where you're going. If you don't know where you're going and you just marry them, you're going to be a miserable person. Let me, let me go real quick here. If you're bipolar, you're over here, over there. You are just bipolar. You're over here, over there, constantly changing. You're an on-the-move person. You don't need a ready-made family, or you don't need to marry a homebody that is waiting for dinner when he gets home from work every night. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen, amen. If you are Mr. and Mrs. Independent, you don't need a man or a woman that is still tied, uh, so closely tied to their mama. Amen. Uh, you don't need that. Come on, somebody. Oil and water. What suits you, not what attracts you. What suits you? Not what attracts you, what suits you. I'm going to stop here because it's getting way too late. Drop my glasses. See, that should bless your heart right there because I can't see the writing anymore without them. Say this and I'll stop and pray for people. Um, as a pastor... There is nothing, there is absolutely nothing that bothers me more than watching people head straight into a tornado and they will not listen. They won't listen. I know what I'm doing. I got it. I'm not a child. I know. And then when you're working on number three, you still got it. You're not a child. And then when we're working on number five, you're not a child. And we still got it. It, it. it just crushes me to see people come to church with a boyfriend, girlfriend, and then after they get married, the other one is never to be seen. And they have to do it all by themselves. It just bugs me. I think to myself this. We should be happy. Doesn't God say for us to occupy until He comes? Yeah, I can't wait for that great getting up morning. I can't wait to get out of here. But until He comes back, He talks about there, the joy of the Lord is our salvation. He talks about us being happy. He talks about us enjoying the life that we live. And it just crushes me as the pastor to see people that I love just trying to survive a life that they hate. So they go to the doctor and they get on pills or they go get them from somebody else. I understand there's anxiety. I get that. But I'm talking about people who have to take medicine to numb the feelings of a life that they hate. I get anxiety. I do. I get it. Trust me. I live it. It bothers me to watch it. It bothers me to watch it. 
And I think to myself, at some point, you would think that we would learn something. I mean, if we're, we're doing this so much, and that's all we do is model relationships, you would think that someday we would figure this out. But you can't do the same old things over and over and get different results. You have to change what you're doing if you want something different than what you have. So what's that look like? Maybe that looks like for you today. When you go home, cook dinner for her. Unless you can't cook, then take her out. Maybe, maybe it's doing a load of laundry for her. My wife tells me, don't touch my laundry. Is that what your mom says too? My wife says, don't touch my laundry ever. That sweater was not supposed to be dried. Now it shrunk. You don't wash underwear with towels. Nobody sees your underwear. Not supposed to. How about I just do something different? Do something different. Than... Here's what I started doing about, about a month, about a month and a half, two months ago, every night. Somebody's oh. I reach over and lay my hand on her while she's going to sleep, and I pray over my wife every single night. Takes a while to do that. Takes a while to learn to do that. By the way, happy 57 years, Sister Earlene, Brother Michael. Happy 57 years today. some of you that might just mean be nice <laughs> I gotta quit I gotta quit I just too much is going through my mind and that's dangerous for somebody who ain't got much of one anyways <laughs> come on stand with me if you will I gotta quit read a statistic and I can see it here because I can blow it up like that 2018 there were 61 million single people in America 61 million single people in America what does that mean that means the that means the hunt is on that's what that means the hunt is on you don't believe it you don't have to be lonely very unusual. God, I ask you that you would touch people in here. I'm not doing this for laughs and giggles. I'm not doing it to be popular. I'm not even doing it, God, to make other people mad and be unpopular. It's not why I just felt like you told me that I should minister on relationships, marriages. God, starting the year off doing something different than we've always done. And God, being happy this year, letting 2020 be the year that we, we decide we're going to live happy. We're not going to live defeated and depressed anymore. Father, I ask you that you would touch every person in here today. I pray, God, that you would touch them. Would you just grab the hand of the person next to you if you've got them, you got them? I just pray, God, that you would touch every person in here today. God, I pray, Lord, that you would minister to them. God, I pray for every marriage in this place. I pray, God, right now for every marriage in this building, I pray, God, that you would heal every word that's ever been said, God, that hurt and the other one didn't know it. God, I pray for healing right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would, you would encourage, uplift, and, and, and God, you would, you, you, you would do something great in every family and every home this year. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would wrap your arms and send your angels, God, to encamp around houses and homes. Bring people together like they've never been together before. God, cause them to see what they fell in love with all those years ago. Help them see, God, what they fell in love with all those years ago. Remind them, God, of what was and how it can be better. Father God, I ask you now to bless your people. We've already had a great altar call today. And God, I ask you to bless your people. I pray, God, that what happened around here during worship, God, that we would take home and we would 
we would jump on that, God, and we would think about the word that was said today, God, and we would try to develop things in our relationship that we've never had before. Father, I love you, and I thank you, and I praise you, and I bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And everybody who loves the Lord said amen. Come on, would you shake somebody's hand? Tell them you love them.